We're going to make a uh, sweet potato and white bean patty with ricotta cheese and my basil garlic mix. All these items separately are great. So combine, they should be just as good or even better. Since everything is warm, I was going to put it through the Cuisinart, but this, I like this idea better. I'm going to use uh, the ricer, the potato ricer. This way, I might have little pieces of something left in there, which is nice. But you got to do this when everything is warm. That's hopefully the beans will go through. Okay, so that idea is shot. But that's what we do, we try. So we'll put this, I'm gonna mash it up right okay, in there. Okay, so that didn't work, but we know that this will work. Just mash up the beans, that's simple. They're warm, they mash easily. We're gonna put the sweet potatoes through that. And this is what I wanted anyway, so I can see some some of the beans in there. Particles instead of being like a puree. So now the sweet potato, which is still warm. One time I tried this, the sweet potato was cold. Of course it didn't work well. So they're warm. The sweet potato I cooked in the microwave or you can bake it but don't boil it because then it will be too watery. And whatever is left on the inside of course we're going to bring out and add to this. So now that we have the sweet potato in there, I'll put the rest. We're going to mix it up and add the rest of the ingredients. So now I'm going to put the egg. I'm going to put one egg and one yolk. When I get finished with this mix, like with any recipe, you have to test it to make sure that whoever gave you the recipe knows what they're talking about. Quite often you copy down a recipe and it doesn't work. Put in the diced onion, raw, and you know when you cook the uh, navy beans, don't cook them in a lot of water because you want to keep that flavor, you don't want the flavor of the beans to go out in the water and you lose it. And as soon as they're very soft, they're done. And you could eat on Keep on adding a little bit of water just to cover the beans as they're simmering. Now I'll add this basil garlic puree that I make. If you, There's a recipe for it on, my, on YouTube. And I keep this in the freezer. Notice when it comes out. It's beautiful, green. Keep a lot of things like that. And when you need them, just take them out of the freezer, defrost, use them, and then uh, put them back. You'd be surprised how long things can last. And then the ricotta cheese. You can use, I use whole, whole milk ricotta. I want the taste. You know, when it comes to cooking sometimes, I'd rather do without the item completely than try and go for something that has no taste. Now that everything's in there except the flour, I'm going to mix it all up. Taste it for seasoning, the salt and the peppers in there. This is like, I never, of course I never did a lot of my recipes before and this is one of them, but I think it should come out good. If you are watching this, then you know it worked. Now I'll taste it, put some flour, make a little piece and see how it comes this out. This is my test piece. 
I know it seems large. I used my small scoop. Well, it doesn't matter what I used. Uh, this has to cook very slow for the simple reason there's raw flour in there, so the flour has to cook. So do the eggs, and it's nice and light. And as soon as I taste it, maybe ready to continue, maybe not. And there's no coating necessary on to put on this. There's no flour, breadcrumbs, anything on the outside. It's just perfect the way it is. I'm going to serve this with a, a tomato sauce. Now it's time to get these things going. This is a small scoop. I'll let you know how much it holds. Now, it's so easy to put it in this way. Just take it, like so, and put it in. It's the fastest way you can do this. And uh, yes, I know they're round. How do you flatten them out? The easiest way is going to be with the back of that spoon. And I just want to show you the, there's no rush. I want to show you the, uh, the flame. See how low that is? I think you can see that. Anyway, very low. So to flatten it out, over here I have a little olive oil on the back of the spoon so none of the patty sticks to it and just flatten them out. Very easy. Just make sure, don't do like I just did. Make sure you put oil each time. You don't want anything to stick. And I made very little adjustment on the mix. And this is just going to make quite a few. The only thing you have to do is just cook it very slowly. And these will brown nicely. And I just ate one. So if you enjoy the flavor of uh, the basil, And the, and the beans and the sweet potato. And look at that, they don't even stick. And this is not a non, this is not a non-stick pan. So I'm just gonna let this film run so you get the idea of how long this takes. It may take a few minutes, so bear with me. I don't wanna have to say, come back in three minutes, four minutes. As long as you see those bubbles on the outside, but I can tell now it's going a little bit too slow. So, raise it up a little, like so. And if that's still not enough, you know, once you add all these items to the pan, it cools the pan off somewhat and these are rather thin right now so they won't take that long to cook so raise it just a hair more see now that's cooking a little faster that's what we want not too fast not too slow we want to guarantee everything on the inside is going to cook through and I have quite a bit of olive oil in there. You don't have to use olive oil. You can use whatever you like. I just find it easier to have just olive oil laying around and nothing else. Space-wise, mess-wise. And then when you see, just lift up one a little bit. Take a look. No color. Usually you'll see light browning around the bottom edges. And when you see that, it's time to turn. Okay, now that's cooking nice. 
So that's like a moderate, that's not very high, that flame. I'm curious to see how much of this misc is going to make. Um, as we began this, it was just two sweet potatoes and uh, a pound of uh, cooked uh, navy beans. I didn't expect to give it give me this this many, but that's good because this is the kind of item that you can make and you can freeze with no problem. And when they come out of the freezer, all you do is just heat them up in the skillet slowly and they're just as good as they are today. But certain things work well in when you freeze them and this type of item happens to be one of them. I have frozen uh, like salmon croquettes opposed to freezing a fresh piece of salmon which is like the worst thing you can do raw it just the freezer just kills kills salmon that fish has to be eaten fresh and there are a couple others like that filet of sole you go to these uh, like Trader Joe's they have all of those uh, fish cryovac I don't care if they're cryovac or not Cryovacking doesn't change things. It still doesn't have that fresh taste anymore. Okay, should I warm up a little tomato sauce for the uh, presentation? Because you're only going to see this one batch here. And after this one batch, I will finish the rest and just make a note on the recipe about how much, uh, how many little patties we get out of it. Almost time to turn. Nice. Maybe if I had a little more light I could see better. I'm not seeing the brown I usually see on the edges, but remember, tilt it towards you, flip it away. That is beautiful. You'll never burn yourself. And then when it comes to flipping it this way, tilt it away, flip, and maybe a little more color over here. You know on these stoves, every stove is the same. Or pans or the ovens, certain areas are hotter than others. This is nice. So I could actually say on this recipe here, I, I would say that uh, it's one of a kind. I probably invented it, which is very difficult to do, because somewhere, somehow, someone has made the same item in some other country. But this, I don't know. I got a feeling it's uh, one of a kind. I should enter this into a, uh, a cooking contest. Color means a lot, and that nice golden brown is a good sign. And then, of course, the presentation on a plate. My tomato sauce is getting hot, so immediately, right after one, two of these are ready, that would be enough. You could serve this like as an appetizer. Or you could put a couple of these on the main course plate as your uh, starch.
or you could just eat a few of these, like eat four of them for, for a main course. We're not all pigs when it comes to eating. And the tomato sauce, of course I have a great recipe for tomato sauce. Mm. But if you like yours, go right ahead and use it. Just don't buy in the store anything like ragu. My mother raised me on ragu. As soon as I learned how to cook, I go, oh my god. Well, I, found, I did find one good one some years back. I don't know if they still sell it. Aunt Millie's. Has nice texture, chopped up tomatoes in it. So, how are we going to serve this? Yeah, would you put the sauce under, or would you put the sauce over? Presentation, always think of that. So think about it for a second. So there's three ways of doing it. Covering it with sauce, just lacing a little sauce over, so you see most of the patty, or just putting the sauce underneath. Well, I definitely would not put the sauce over and cover it completely. So it's a toss-up between having the sauce under it and placing these on top, or just lacing a little bit over so you see the sauce on it and you see the patty. That's what I'm going to do. And we're just about ready. So there's flour in here and eggs to bring it and to hold it together and a little baking powder. So remember, when you're using baking powder, take the baking powder, put it with the flour or sift them together or if you don't have a sifter, just put them in uh, the flour and the baking powder in a soup plate like this and take your fine wire whip which every good home should have just take one of these and just for a few minutes you'll blend the baking powder and the flour together that's very simple time that's how long it's taken to cook these they're done so we're going to make sure the bottoms are nice and brown which they are and this bottom is browner than the top so what you do I go like that so I like a nice color so we have two there and we take the tomato sauce And that's all you have to do. Just lace the tomato sauce over like that. We'll put the tomato sauce under and sit the patties right on top. Garnish it with a little parsley or a couple of sprigs of basil and you'll have a nice little appetizer. Well that's it. I'm gonna count the rest, cook the rest right now. <laughs> 